Turn it up to 11 because on this episode we are talking about Studio 666. What's going on guys? Welcome to Victims and Villains. If you guys are new to this channel, we create content just to educate and engage individuals like yourselves on mental health awareness and suicide prevention through pop culture. My name is Captain Nostalgia. I have the privilege of being a writer, podcaster, and the film festival director for Horrific Hope, our upcoming horror-based film festival like more information on this year's lineup more podcasts and movie reviews like this and most importantly our mental health resource library along with links to all of our social media those links are in the descriptions below this one is not gonna be for everyone i'm just gonna put that out there right in the ethos right at the top of this video 666 tells the story of the foo fighters who play themselves and essentially they're working on their 10th album, you know, Milestone. Dave Grohl's like, it's got to be different than anything else we've ever done. And so they end up going into a murder house that ends up kind of getting them into this weird rabbit hole of ritualistic and cannibalistic and essentially Grohl getting possessed and it's weird and it's fun and let's talk about it. Say what you want about any entertainer that comes outside of the movie world into the movie world. Decent actors in terrible movies. But at the end of the day, actors disappear into the world and... I know as a co-host of the Nicolas Cage podcast, I am aware that actors can deliver terrible performances. I am fully aware of that. I'm not intending every actor in every film that I put in, whether it's physical, whether I'm seeing it in the theaters or renting it on a streaming service, I'm not expecting to be wowed every single time. Into this movie with the morbid curiosity of how the Foo Fighters as a band transitioned to Foo Fighters as actors. I'm going to say some of them work and some of them don't. Dave Grohl being the leading man, some of the lines that he delivers, yes, it's kind of goofy and it's kind of kind of stumbles over. It's kind of monotoned. Pasmir and Rami Jaffe, who are in the actual band, I can't really like like some of their scenes are really awkward. Studio 666 feels like a movie that it's supposed to be purposely acted terrible or does not have this high caliber expectation. And the fact that we are now one week removed from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 and hearing social media's criticisms about that movie in particular, one of the things that we talked about in the podcast, check out the full episode and check out the movie on Netflix if you haven't done it already. Is that you can't come into a movie like Texas Chainsaw 22 and expect high art. My morbid curiosity comes out with the the final ex the final result being you can't look at something like Studio 666 and expect high art. It's not. I, I will say that it is far from it. It is slapsticky, it is funny, it really leans in to the tropes of like the Evil Dead 2 go far as to say it feels like a distant cousin once removed from Evil Dead's universe. That's high honor. That's high praise. See what I did there? This movie, it works really well. Acting aside, it works really well as both a comedy and a horror film. <laughs> the jokes feel really intentional and actually work really well. It's a film, it truly does take its time to build up the lore and the mythos of this house and kind of how Dave Kroll's character is affected throughout the course of this until it breaks and you kind of get the exposition of what is going on about in the start of the third act. The act has so many freaking surprises that I was constantly like I called some of them and then there were others where I was like didn't see that coming. This was highly entertaining. 
I think with the, the charisma, and if you know enough about the Foo Fighters, and I grew up on the Foo Fighters, so like for me, like not only do I really like their music, but I'm also a fan of just their social media and just getting to see how they interact with their fans and just how complete goofballs they are. I think this film captures not only that charisma, but also at the same time their love of the genre. As a horror movie, this film is, oh, it's so sweet. The third act of this movie is really what makes this act like it is it's a slow build to a lot of the stuff that they set up. But I will say this is that once it gets into it and this thing just just throws its hats in the air like it is balls to the wall, just insanity. This film has now set the bar for what I would classify as my favorite gag in the movie. In any horror film, it has it right here. And uh, if you think that uh, that bus scene from Texas Chainsaw last week was, was brutal, wait till you see how some of the people die here. I do spend the majority of the movie with the Foo Fighters. It's the supporting cast that I really think brings a lot of fun and humor and surprises as well. Will Forte, one of the best parts of this movie. Garlin is an incredible manager. Grossman, and if she ever by any chance happens to see this video, I grew up with her on Nip Tuck and What I Like About You, and I always am delighted when she pops up in things. Movie, a very little bit, but she is some of my favorite parts in this movie. But I forget the next door neighbor, Miss Whitney Cummings. Whitney Cummings in this movie is not only a genius plot device, but also hilarious. This movie balances horror and comedy really well. I don't know if I've said that. It's just, this movie is so much fun. Please go check this movie out. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and give this a Rorschach rating. Of, so on our Rorschach rating scale, this one is going to land at a 3.5 out of 5 for me. I loved the pacing of this movie. The supporting cast was awesome. The jokes land. The horror is just brutal. And above all else, it is just fun it is a blast and if you love the Foo Fighters if you love horror if you want to laugh this is just such an epically funny time however some of the acting in it is awkward it does really lean into a lot of really cringy moments that kind of make you squirm in your seat and while I do like the pacing in this movie there are several parts that just feel like this film could have been cut about 10 minutes shorter but it's a blast it's a, it's a true delight i couldn't help but watch this movie with a smile on my face the entire time get out now it's time for our mental health moment due to our content mental health moment is where we take a theme of mental health from the film which we are covering or talking about and we expand upon it for a few moments in the hopes to just deconstruct the stigma surrounding mental health talked a good deal over the years about the positivity of art on your mental health. I absolutely stand by that, but this film also serves as a cautionary tale when that art becomes its own hindrance to your own mental health. For the majority of the setup for this first act of the movie, Dave Grohl has writer's block. Like he just can't seem to create anything with this album. This is a cautionary tale because sometimes that frustration of being able the inability to create something new or exciting or refreshing, it, be, it turns what could be a mental health, uh, almost therapeutic exercise into a job and stressful and anxiety driven. It becomes the very thing that you are trying to escape when you first start it. So I just want to say know your limits. Know what is too much for you. Understand that like art at the end of the day it doesn't have to be a job. It is a hobby. It is a form of therapy and it is a form of emotional release. Draw a line in the sand and define that line on what is going to be. How much is too much. Understand and know when it's enough. There have been several times over the years of podcasting and covering film festivals and, and writing and all of the stuff that I do here with victims and villains. And I do multiple videos a week. I am uh, constantly working on booking things. I am 
Uh, on top of that, also doing not one but three podcasts, hosting, editing, and promoting is full. Years ago, I had to define a moment in the line saying, all right, this is the day that I'm going to definitively rest. This is the day that I'm going to take and I'm not going to touch social media. I'm not going to touch uh, anything related to victims. Like this is a, this at the end of the day is my passion and I want it to, I still want to be passionate and I want to take my own mental health seriously. So when was the last time that you defined what your line is when it comes to your creativity and or your therapeutic exercises. That's going to do it for us on this episode. If you guys need our mental health resource library, links are in the show notes below. And go see Studio 666 and comment what your favorite Foo Fighters song is. Mine is All My Life. Have a good night.